you guys can use them. There's roughly 30 plus tools in here or tricks that you can use. So let's go ahead and get started. This first one is just a series of science YouTube channels. Uh, Head Squeeze, Vsauce, ASAP Science, Six Science, SciShow, they're all different YouTube channels you can subscribe to and they have a series of videos related to science topics. They cover pretty much anything from just general curiosity to actually curriculum specific videos um, in their channel. So then you have YouTube Crash Course. Uh, these are brothers Hank and John Green. They basically cover social studies, language arts, and science. However, I recommend that you preview before you show it as sometimes they do say inappropriate things or have inappropriate words in them. Um, they usually run about 10 to 12 minutes and it wouldn't be a bad idea to have some sort of um, study guide with those videos as they do move at a very quick pace. <clears throat> so the next thing is this cool little trick um, that I learned at NC Ties actually. There's a lot of YouTube downloaders but due to restrictions in our school with Java they tend to not work. Well here's a workaround for that. If you go to the video link at YouTube and then you can delete everything from the H to the first dot so HTTP colon backslash backslash www dot delete all that and type SS there instead. That'll then kick you to a new site and you can choose to download a version to your computer, your desktop, or wherever you want to download it. Um, it's important that the new URL reads ssyoutube.com slash whatever the rest of it is. Um, so you replace everything from the H to the first dot with SS hit enter, kicks you to a new site and it'll download it for you. So that's a cool way to download YouTube videos, deals with the buffering issue if you need to get past that. So Educated and, edu and Ed Puzzle are two very unique um, tools, you, you're allowed to upload a video from YouTube, Vimeo, TeacherTube, whatever the case is, and then you can embed questions with inside that video. Educated then allows students to watch the video and answer these questions. They're not allowed to scrub through the video or just go from beginning to end to get all your notes or watch and just pretend like they watched the video. They have to watch the entire video to answer the questions. And then both of these tools catalog or um, inventory and grade how your students do on those questions. So it'll say Johnny missed three out of four, he got a 25% and it'll tell you which kids watched the entire video and all that stuff too. So it's a great way for our flipped classroom teachers to put some accountability in, accountability in their video part um, and uh, hold students accountable for watching the entire video. Buzzmath.com is middle school specific um, math problems. Great little resource. You can say I need help with fractions and boom it'll generate a bunch of fraction questions. Noma.com is free international data sets and visualizations. So there's tons of data out there that you can use. Um, they've got great um, images and visuals of those data and a great, of course, a lot of charts and actual data sets you can use as well. Mission-US.org are American Revolution simulations. They are absolutely fantastic for eighth grade social studies. Schrockguide.net is from a teacher um, this EdTech guru. Uh, her name is Kathy Schrock. She is great. Some of you probably know about this set already. But it's got a lot of ton of great tech resources on there, um, rubrics, lesson plans, evaluations, links to other places. I mean, she really has cataloged a lot of ed tech resources. I'll show you another website that's just as good as well as hers. Um, but schrockguide.net is a great place to go to get started. Pictochart.com is a great place to create infographics. Um, infographics, you've seen them, you just don't realize what they are. This is kind of one in the background. It's got a, you know, a small amount of data and. Um, it's a, basically a picture that it incorporates data, visuals, very limited text to prove a point or raise awareness for a topic. Um, a lot of you've probably seen a lot of education ones dealing with dropout rates. You know where the United States falls in competition with other um, countries and stuff like that. So PictoChart.com is a great kind of drag and drop tool to create these infographics. PicMonkey.com is an online photo editor. You can you know edit photos, you, but what I like it for is you can create picture collages. So if you are creating photos for some of your products, you can put them in a collage that you can share out later. Um, if you actually go to the front page of our Durant website, there is one um, with our students on there right now um, that got to meet the governor. So he's on there, and I use PicMonkey to cattle or to collage those photos together. OneWord.com is a great writing prompt starter. So you just go to OneWord.com, click Go. One word pops up, and it gives you a time allotted amount of time allotted. Um, an allotment of time to write something, whatever that something is related to that word, um, gets kids thinking um, and helps them really get their brains moving real quick at the beginning of class. TammyWarchester.com is the other website I was telling you about, very similar to ShrotGuide.net. Um, TammyWarchester.com does a great job of inventory, having an inventory of tech resources for teachers. DialMyCalls.com is very similar to Remind 101. I know a lot of our teams use Remind 101 to push out 
um, text messages to their parents or students. Dial My Calls is basically an all call. You just put in the phones, the phone numbers for your um, parents, your students, whatever the case is. You can record your voice and boom, it'll push it out to all your parents whose phone numbers you have. Newsilla.com is a great resource um, for nonfiction articles. It's a great way to, great way to include current events um, or even just nonfiction articles that are general interest. Um, and the cool thing about it is you can pick an article. So right now there's a lot of Malaysia flight stuff up there. And then you can change the Lexile score on the right-hand side. And so you'll see different options you can choose from. And it'll go from 4th to 12th grade. And some of the current, um, some of the articles have quizzes as well. But it's a great way, like I said, for nonfiction, variety of topics, science, technology, education, all nonfiction stuff, though. Great website because you can still have kids getting the same content and obviously differentiate the reading level of what they're doing. Thinglink.com is one that Brooke shared with you guys already, but it's a very cool kind of final product, um, a different way of looking at things. So uh, let's say, for example, this, this picture back here you're looking at right now is a picture of a toucan. You would take that image and you would put these little dots everywhere, and these dots represent um, other things that I've accomplished. Maybe I've made a YouTube video about how toucans are, you know, endangered, or maybe I found the original F Toucan Sam Fruit Loops commercial on YouTube, and I linked that here, and then a, there's another dot down here of a, of a paper that I uploaded to um, Dropbox on toucans and their natural habitats, and then there's another one I did that had a series of color art history based on the toucan. Whatever the case is, you'll see these dots, and it just makes pictures interactive, and it's a really cool way to, um, to bring pictures alive. Decide Now app is a great app that helps you make decisions for your groups. Um, so let's say you assign a, you know kids in a group and they're having a hard time, like I did that last time, you did that last time, I'm not doing it this time. You just drop your app in there. It'll decide it for them. It's very easy to use. You can download it from the App Store. Grammarly.com is a proofreader, a grammar coach, and plagiarism. It checks plagiarism against close to like 80 billion websites, I think it says. It's unreal, honestly. Um, but it's a proofreader, a grammar coach, and plagiarism. It's a good place to go to to... Have your kids spell check and you know get them accustomed to checking for grammar. <clears throat> FutureMe.org is a place where you can write a letter to yourself in the future, so you can type up an email and have it sent to you at a later date. Great way to set goals at the beginning of units and see if they were met at the end or beginning of the year and see if they're met at the end. Um, the guy that kind of showed me this, Adam Bellow, is a is a great speaker and he talks about this being an IEP for everybody. You know, let's set kids goals and at the end of the year email it to themselves and let's say, hey, have you met it? So FutureMe.org is a great way to do that. Print What You Like is a Chrome extension, so if you're a Chrome Power user like I am, you can get a Chrome extension. It'll locate in your toolbar, and it basically is a white box with some little icon in it. But essentially what printwhatyoulike.com allows you to do is you can put in a URL, like an article, and you can say, I only want to print this select amount of stuff, and you can start highlighting and create, only print out what you need. It saves a lot of paper. Desmos.com is an online graphic calculator, so desmos.com for you math people online graphic calculator just go to that website groupiful is a great way to kind of project management um, for groups I know a lot of us are starting to use a lot of collaborative groups we're having a hard time managing those groups and groupiful makes it easy for you to do that I definitely recommend um, getting that started realworldmath.org I know math teachers you're always battling with the well I'm never gonna use algebra ever again in my life well Google Earth has come up with a series of real world math problems um, using Google, Google Earth that uh, kids can explore and, and it proves that obviously we use math outside of the math classroom. RecordMP3.org. Some of you may be familiar with SoundCloud. Um, a lot of kind of new emergent artists are uploading their music there. But, you know, if you want to create a podcast or you're looking for a place just to capture your voice, just go to RecordMP3.org. You just click allow on the microphone, record, boom, it downloads directly to your desktop. Great way for kids to Maybe do a book recording um, and you can drop it into a PowerPoint, whatever the case is, but it's a good way to have podcasts with student voice. Haiku Deck, that's actually what you're looking at right now. It's a limited word presentation tool, like a haiku, 575. Um, so a Haiku Deck, like what you see here, has these pictures that go in the background. These are in uh, Haiku Deck already, um, so you have to use them as you've seen all these pictures. You've also saw slides at the beginning where the title was at the top, and then you had five bullets. You can write a ton of stuff in those bullets. It'll only shrink down so much to let you fit stuff on one line. But the gist is here is that you clearly have to know what you are presenting in order to use Haiku Deck. So we'll force kids to learn the materials as opposed, as opposed to relying on the PowerPoints they've been making for years. Um, Telegami is a great way um, to animate a video. So let's say I made a video of how to check out a book in the library. 
I can then drop my character on top of that video and that I can narrate that char character's voice as we walk through the steps of how to check out a book in a library. It's very similar, it reminds me of Vokey um, on steroids. So it's a very cool tool and looks very savvy when you're done. Tour Builder with Google.com. Uh, TourBuilder.withGoogle.com is a great place to create a tour of places you visited. I could easily see um, teachers saying, you know, let's plot Paul Revere's ride, and then we're going to add in different elements at each spot. You know, maybe I'll link a YouTube video here. It's a great way to aggregate resources. It's um, very similar to Tripline.net, which I showed you guys not too long ago. But TourBuilderWithGoogle.com, I just love Google, so anything with Google is going to rock and roll. Speaking of Google, a Google a day. Um, is a game, an old school game for internet search. So essentially, you know, we all remember the ticking bar at the uh, at the old school bars where you would play trivia, and that bar would tick down, and as long as it took you to get the question right, was how many points you got. So Google a Day allows you to simulate a Google search um, that no longer allows kids to, to, to type questions directly into the Google search. So for example, the search may be, who was the starting point guard for the 1983 NC State Championship team? Um, and you couldn't just search that whole question. You'd have to search 1983 NCAA championship, NC State starting five, then you find the point guard, and boom, you put in the answer, and it gives you the points. And it's a game. It'll go to the next question. So that competition level, it's a great way for kids to work on research tools. It's also a great way for kids, if there's some time at the end and they have laptops, give them something useful to do. Let's hone their, their research skills a little bit. Classcharts.com. I believe Miss Root uses this. Um, at classcharts.com. It's a great way to create your seating charts. So when she's out, if she's using a teacher she's familiar with, she emails all her lesson plans and seating charts directly to that teacher using classcharts.com. It's also an app. So let's say, for example, Johnny is not doing very well in your class today, and you've had to talk to Johnny four or five times, as opposed to you having to remember that or make marks on a notebook, you can just tap his desk in your seating chart in your, on your app on your iPhone or iPad, and it creates a running log of that. Um, and then in the day you can see, oh, I've talked to Johnny four times. Maybe it's time that I write him up. So Hemingway dot, Hemingwayapp.com, it is a website. You can copy and paste uh, a Word document into it. You can get the grade level, paragraph, sentence, words, and characters, just like you would in a Word document. Um, and, but it also reveals run-ons and complex sentences, and it will suggest that you try to narrow those things down. It will give you suggestions for adverbs and recommends you use a more powerful verb. And then bad word choices. For example, I utilize the bathroom. Nobody utilizes the bathroom. We use the bathroom. So, you know, sometimes kids will thesaurus the mess out of words just to beef up their grade level of writing. And then it also reveals passive voice. It recommends you don't have more than two. So it'll highlight each of those in different colors. Kahoot. This seems to be a very popular game that is catching on. It's very similar to uh, the Google a Day scoring system, whereas there's a allotted amount of time that kids can answer a question. Um, you create all the questions for them. They can answer them using their iPhone, their iPad, or a desktop or laptop. Um, they go to a specific URL. Um, they input the game code that you create, and they start playing the game. Uh, multiple choice questions. The cool thing about it is at the end you can generate all that data in an Excel spreadsheet, and you could form review groups on that. You know, you could reform mediation enrichment groups based on that. It's an absolutely fun game. Um, would work very well for kind of a different spin on review games that we've been doing in the past. So these are the fantastic web-based websites that I shared at Tech Tuesday on Wednesday.